Florida Gators recruiting is on fire. Defensive lineman Micah Burrow commits to the Gators over Georgia. Let's get into it right here on Gators Breakdown. Gators Breakdown. Because there's never a dull moment in Gator Nation. The Gators Breakdown podcast is ready to go. I am your host, David Waters. You can find me on Twitter at GatorDave underscore SEC. And here we are with another commitment for the Florida Gators. Fifth in three days. Florida not slowing down right here on the recruiting trail for this class of 2024. These official visits started. Little bit of bumps. Got some offensive linemen going, but we're waiting for these big names to pop. And Florida's getting them now. After this third official visit weekend, Florida is rolling in this class of 2024 right now. And we'll get into it right here on this episode of Gators Breakdown with the latest being defensive lineman Micah Burrow from the state of Georgia, committing to the Gators over Georgia, where he just come off of a visit. Big, big win for Billy Napier, Sean Spencer, and that defensive staff. Austin Armstrong as well, of course, the new defensive coordinator coming in. Florida killing it on the defensive line this weekend. Uh, and today on this Monday, so big, big pickup for the Gators. Uh, massive pickup, too, as far as size go. We'll get into that, too. Uh, this is a position of need and size of need uh, for the Gators right here. So, everybody, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Look, all these commitments flying at you right here. We're up to date with you right here on Gators Breakdown. So, you know, like what we're doing right here with all – I mean, just so much news going on the last few days uh, right here on the recruiting trail uh, and some good news right here. So smash that like button, subscribe on YouTube, subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Uh, also join Gators Breakdown Plus if you haven't done so yet. Uh, it's been it's been a fun few days uh, right there, keeping that conversation going. Uh, even that baseball chat, of course, with the baseball team uh, representing a little bit. If you're watching the YouTube version, uh, base, shout out to the baseball team for uh, 2-0 starting the College World Series. But, hey, we talk it all right there on Gators Breakdown Plus. Link is in the description to join. You get your commercial-free episodes uh, there as well. Well, extra episode of chat coming up this week with all the recruiting news as well. So plenty of going on at Gators Breakdown Plus uh, this week as well. So, man, just fun, fun to get into uh, right now and what the Gators are doing right now on the recruiting trail. So without further ado, let's get it started. Gator Nation, you know how we do it. Hey, we got to commit Micah Burrow from the state of Georgia three-star on the 24-7 sports composite and three-star on the own three industry rankings. He is 994th overall on the 24-7 sports composite, the 96th ranked defensive lineman, and 936th overall on the own three industry rankings, 88th ranked defensive lineman from Creekside, Fairburn, Georgia. It was a battle between Florida and Georgia here. You know, don't let the three-star uh, ranking, don't let the three-star rating for you on this one. Look, Georgia gets three stars, too. <laughs> you know, for as good as they recruit, they still you know, get three stars after three stars. But one here, you can see why. I mean, six foot five, verified 390 pounds. I mean, this is a difference maker, at least with the size to start with, for a high school prospect. Commits to Florida over Georgia. Coming, He was in Athens this past weekend. You go find he's going to need to find and probably maintain that certain uh, playing weight in college, but he's the type of interior defensive lineman that can eat up space, take on double teams exactly what Florida needs. You know, Florida's a little lighter on that type of player, that type of depth, uh, with but, but with, with, with bodies like this. Uh, but now you know you, you find somebody that maybe you know, can be an anchor uh, in, in the coming seasons here. I mean, you go look at li limited film, limited huddle out there, but creates pure havoc. Um, when uh, you, you see those huddle highlights, they're a little dated, nothing from last season, uh, but creates pure, pure havoc, uh, creating the opposing team's backfields uh, from, from, you know, from the inside. Uh, and forced ball carriers will for, force the quarterback uh, to bounce it outside a bit. So big, big time uh, position of need for the Gators, size of need, somebody to plug that middle, be a difference maker. And it's not about the, the crazy stat line for that type of position. It's really about make plays when you can, but open it up for everybody else to make the plays. Uh, and that's what Makai Burrow uh, looks to bring to the table for the Gators. To do, like I said, don't let that three-star ranking for you. Georgia's done well enough on defense. So I think we know if they want a guy, we're going head-to-head -head with them. You know, they 
They, they, they have that history to say, okay, this is the type of player you want. So going head to head, getting the victory over the dogs here. We'll get into that more in just a second, but big win for Billy Napier and staff here. So uh, he told Hay three, uh, on three Hayes Fawcett about his commitment and why he did it to Florida. Basically just a relationship I built with the staff stood out. Also the fact that they had everything I needed it succeeds not just athletic wise, but also academically. I just feel like Florida's the best fit for me. Uh, and of course, his relationship with the coaching staff and how the Gators plan to use him really, really stood out. He said he's closest with Sean Spencer and Coach James. Coach James basically comes from the same part as Georgia uh, as me. He was at Westlake. I'm at Creekside, so we get along well. Me and Coach Spencer build a great relationship. They plan on having me play at nose, but also playing three technique. So he had 43 tackles, seven tackles for loss, four sacks, three quarterback hurries at that nose tackle spot at Creekside. Uh, so, of course, you know, like I said, you know, stats don't really stand out for defensive tackles. Uh, you know, and, you know, pure, pure defensive tackles at this size, you know, you're not really going to get that, you know, high four-star, five-star ranking uh, out of that anyway, just at that position. Uh, but, you know, Georgia worked him out last week. Uh, they liked what they saw. Uh, and the process here was he was supposed to visit Michigan and bumped out that Michigan visit, did Georgia to host him this past weekend. He worked out. They liked what they saw. They wanted to get him on campus. He's flown up the radar because of all the Florida love and the Georgia love and the Michigan love. Georgia offered him a long time ago. He picked up a Georgia offer in 2020. That was his first FBS offer. I think Georgia made it clear they wanted him. And they were trying to steal him away late. You know, it was kind of trending Florida going into this Georgia visit this weekend. I think Georgia was trying to see if they could steer that away. But the trip to Athens this past weekend, not enough. And look, big time get over Georgia. Cannot emphasize enough big time get. Uh, we know how they recruit. We know how they develop on defense. The Gators get one. And Georgia will still have one of, if not the best class in the country, this, this class as well. Uh, but you know, if you're in a battle with a few players for them, you're gonna if you're gonna catch up, you got to win a few of them. All right? You know, right now at this point, you're but you're not gonna win more of them. You but you got to win a, your fair share of. Them. Uh, and Florida's done so. Florida's done so in the last couple of days. You have to win some to catch up. And Bora had Jordan Davis as his host this past weekend. So you know, it looks like Florida's continued effort over the time was the difference. And now Florida. Would went Nasir Johnson, Burrow, where Georgia was a, Georgia was a serious threat for both those guys. Florida pulls him in within a couple day period. Big big win for the Gators right here. Cannot emphasize big win in so many ways. A win because you needed a player like this. You needed a player with a size like this. You needed to beat Georgia head to head for a guy like this. I mean, you know, and to continue the momentum Florida had built. I mean, just think about the momentum. And this awesome, awesome defensive line haul, the Gators just landed. And this year, Johnson, Amaris Williams. I mean, let's just go back to it. Let's just go back. Starting here with the Amaris or Amaris. I have to probably clear that up. But, I mean, he was a four-star. 24-7 sports composite. Four-star on the own three industry rankings. 186 overall player. 23rd ranked defensive lineman. Four-star on the own three industry. 180 overall there. 21st defensive lineman. You know, top 200 player right here. And then Nasir Johnson was, like I said, another Florida-Georgia battle. Four-star on both of the 24-7 sports composite on three industry rankings. We went heavy deep dive into him as well the last episode. Top 250 player here on both services. So Florida, look, we knew Florida needed a lot of help <laughs> on this defensive front coming into this final official visit weekend in three, three in three days. Got him on Saturday, a little bit of uh, taking a break on Sunday, and then right here on this Monday, Florida gets another up front on the defensive line. So, I mean, talking about defensive line, where does Florida go from here? And before we do, I'm, it's going to be a big shout out right here to my, my good buddy EH. You might, guys might know him uh, on the message boards out there, but really, really good lengthy post on the Florida Victorious message board. Guys, you can join Florida Victorious. For her. Of course, it helps Florida the NIL, but you also get access to some great looks and some great messages on the message board. EH putting one up today. Florida Victorious, you can join 
with the link in the description. But EH bringing that fire today. Now, we'll give a preview of what he posted this morning. EH really connected in the recruiting world uh, on, on the Florida side of things, uh, brings it, tells the truth, brings it to you straight. Uh, I've gotten to know him pretty good over the last couple of years, and I'm going to give you a little excerpt of what he posted on the Florida Victorious message board today. But, you know, we start taking a, a look at – you know, Florida and this defensive front. And I'm going to, you know, post a graphic there of, you know, where Florida uh, and some of the targets that we've talked about and discussed over the last few weeks. But a little excerpt from EH and his post on the Florida Victoria's message board. He says, a strong side defensive end, I presume we have uh, Amaris Williams slotted there at the strong side defensive end. Hard to imagine taking more and more here after, of course, Kelby and Cameron in the previous class. Uh, Daylon Evans, Kendall Jackson, LJ McCray sitting out there. Uh, seems like the opportunity for Evans, you know, may have passed, you know, to kind of extend extend that thought uh, for, from EH. Uh, I'll put in, you know, it may have passed over uh, right here for Dalen Evans. We'll see. Uh, Alabama's a name I've been hearing uh, lately as well. Had that great visit, a couple visits to Florida. Um, but, you know, we'll see the timeline here. Uh, so, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, just a little info over there of, of hearing Alabama's name as far as Dalen Evans go. But, uh, of course, you know, with, with Kendall Jackson, the local Gainesville kid, and uh, you know, now Amaris on board as well, um, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, so he keeps taking visits, does Kendall Jackson. Um, and so we'll see. We'll, we'll see where that goes. Uh, is it a slow play from the Gator side? Is it a slow play uh, from the Jackson side? Uh, EH asked that question. So um, he still has Jackson as a take. Uh, you treat LJ as a plus one. Of course, LJ McCray, you want this guy in the class? Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll we'll see where that one goes. But yeah, he would certainly be, you know, a plus one in the in the vein of you fit him in this class no matter how uh, he wants in. Uh, EH goes on to say for defensive tackle, uh, it's a spot he'd rather take uh, three or more so than strong side defensive end uh, when the seer on board. Uh, he's not worried about that FSU visit uh, coming up this week. Uh, Nasir says he's 100% committed. He's going to take that FSU visit this coming week, of course. Uh, but feels really good there. Uh, and then, of course, now Burrow uh, in the class. We'll see where where, where it goes there. So, um, you know, where's DeAndre Robinson fit in here? It's a good good question, I think, too. He was, Florida was set up really good uh, earlier on. Georgia, Texas. Uh, it, getting visits, fall OV to Ohio State and LSU. Now that timeline is going to be extended because of those fall visits, maybe. Uh, and also, EDH mentions it's if you look at the entry ups and fall in the rankings, and he's just outside that top 400 now. Uh, it's something I noticed when I was putting these graphics together this morning as well. It's his fall. Uh, recently for DeAndre Robinson. So we're seeing, I mean, he's still got big names, big, uh, big schools after him. Uh, so we'll see what that means. But uh, his ranking peaked last September, EH says, the top 200. Uh, and now he's the 200 spot drop uh, in the latest ranking updates. So um, a little bit of a uh, defensive tackle look for you right there, but Florida really nailing it, of course, with Nasir, uh, and of course, uh, picking up uh, the commitment today from Burrow. Uh, and then let's go to Edge just a little bit. And, of course, Jamonta Waller's name. I don't have his name on defensive line here because it w- even what EH uh, says right here, uh, we depend on maybe where Waller fits in. I feel pretty good about him, uh, the linebacker from Mississippi. Uh, great visit this past weekend. Uh, but where does he fit in? That may depend on Jordan Ross. Uh, if we get EH goes on to say if we get Jordan Ross, and I think Waller gets slaughtered as an outside linebacker, uh, better shot at Ross than what people realize. Uh, he's our best chance of adding another five-star, EH says. Um, Ross has top three of Florida, Georgia, Tennessee. Visits Tennessee this weekend. Truth be told, he thinks Florida, Tennessee likely lead over Georgia. It's an emotional connection with Ross, similar to what uh, we did with Kelby Collins last cycle. So he does want to warn people, though. This is the good information EH will bring to you. Rumors of Bama becoming more involved, and that could push back a timeline maybe for Jordan Ross. So certainly something to look out for. Uh, the July barbecue would be a great time, he says, to go get Waller and Ross to go public. Uh, if they are close at that point, we'll know more after the big Tennessee visit weekend. Of course, so, you know Waller, uh, I believe he set that timeline for late July to make his decision on his birthday. Uh, feel pretty good about the Gators' chances 
right there. So big shout out one more time on the Florida Victorious message board. EH posting there. He posts on Gators Breakdown Plus as well. Uh, sometimes some really good conversation, but you get some uh, in-depth recruiting looks that you don't get elsewhere uh, from a very uh, plugged in personality right there that you've known on message boards for years now, EH, but uh, getting a little bit closer to him with Gators Breakdown Plus, Florida Victorious as well. It's good stuff right there. You know, we're taking a look at you know, the options moving forward for Florida in his defensive line class, but really, really hit it hard uh, the last few days. So, all right, let's take a look now. You know, with Burrow, 14 players now in the class of 2024 for the Gators, uh, now sitting at number six on the 24-7 sports composite I mean, that's a that's a big. Your Florida's what twenty two going into Saturday, and then you're now up to number six here uh, for the Gators. And let me get those rankings up. And Georgia, Michigan, Ohio State, Notre Dame, LSU, Florida at number six. There, I mean, so Georgia number one, LSU five as your SEC teams in front of Florida. Florida just jumped Penn State right here, uh, or you know, to get in front of Penn State right here with this recent commitment. Now, so of course, you know, firmly. Firmly now in the top three of uh, on three rankings as well. You know, Florida sitting at number three behind Georgia and Ohio State uh, with 14 commitments. So sixth on the 24-7 sports composite. Third on the on three industry rankings. Florida recruiting is on fire right now, rolling right now, and may not be slowing down anytime soon on this day. You know, we're waiting for Marcus Mescal. He's supposed to be making his decision today. Uh, the offensive lineman between Florida and LSU. We'll see where that one goes. Hopefully some good news uh, there for the Gators coming even more <laughs> on this Monday. So, uh, you know, one more thing to look at this. Burrow, amazing, he's a fifth player from the state of Georgia. Five players from the state of Georgia. And if I'm uh, thinking of this right, Matt Scott's from Georgia too, right? Uh, Got to meet, yeah, he's from Georgia as well. So if Florida gets another commitment today, and it is Mascot, it would be another <laughs> Georgia commitment. We'd make it six. So we'll see where that one goes. You know, that's, I hear some good things for Florida. Um, hearing some LSU stuff as well. So we'll see where that one goes. Uh, but, man, it uh, could be a, another extending uh, of this good few days for Florida of this day. But, you know, looking at the state of Georgia, Burroughs, the fifth player from the state of Georgia. Miles Graham, Amir Jackson, Desir Johnson, Josiah Davis, all held from the Peach State. Uh, and Florida could be adding to that even more. Uh, so, I mean, this is crazy. You know, right now, you got two from the state of Florida. Uh, Miles Graham, I think, is going to relocate thing. Um, so, you know, we'll see where, where, where that one goes. Uh, but uh, so you could shift that a bit. But surprisingly, as we sit here in June here, Florida really hitting the state of Georgia pretty. I mean, Georgia. That state, of course, uh, really producing high-level football talent. There's Florida, it's Texas, it's California, it's Georgia. You know, those are the four states right there that they're really, uh, I think, produce the best talent out there in the college football recruiting world. And Florida doing really good um, in that state of Georgia right up north. So could be got five right now or, yeah, five right now. Could be add more to that. When it's all said and done. Uh, let me go through some comments right here. Uh, yeah, Matthew Walker says Marcus Mascal is, of course, yeah, four crystal balls to fake Florida. Yeah, Florida would be my pick uh, as well. So uh, got to get it done. Got to get it done. Would be a really good pickup there for the Gators, of course. Uh, we'll be right here ready to go if he makes that decision. For the Gators. Um, I'll probably do a little more recruiting update probably later today, uh, with, with either with Mascal uh, and his decision uh, and kind of get caught up from the weekend a bit too. Going to let this episode kind of just concentrate on uh, the Burrow commitment here. So, yeah, plenty of other storylines to get into uh, for this recruiting class. So we'll, uh, we'll let it go. But certainly I want to hop on board this morning while I had a chance and update you guys on this most recent commitment but man big big time hit that like button hit that subscribe button before we call it an episode here i hopefully hopefully this won't be the only one as i said i do plan on probably doing another one anyway just kind of catching up from this past visit weekend uh, at the same time uh, as we're waiting on marcus mascola's decision the offensive lineman from georgia deciding between florida 
in the LSU. All right, so that'll do it for this episode of Gators Breakdown. I am your host, David Waters. You can find me on Twitter at GatorDave underscore SEC. Guys and girls out there, thank you for joining me on this episode of Gators Breakdown.